Hi everyone, this is uh, part of the uh, revision lesson um, on hydrosphere and I'm going to focus on hydrographs in this first part. A hydrograph question typically involves description of a hydrograph and then suggesting reasons why the changes are taking place on the hydrograph. This question is from the 2019 paper, so if you want to go onto the SQA website yourself, you can download it from there. You can also download the mark scheme too, and that's a really useful thing to look at if you're finding these questions tricky and trying to revise them. So let's break these two questions down into their parts. Let's deal with part A, describing the changes in discharge level. Typically, half the marks of the question can be scored by describing the changes. And as long as you understand the basic principles behind doing this, this means that you can be fairly confident of scoring half marks in this question without having to do very much revision at all. What you need to understand are the constituent parts, that means the working parts of a hydrograph. The bars that you see, those show the rainfall that has fallen over a period of time. Time is represented along the bottom of the graph. In this instance, this is the amount of rainfall that has fallen between 11 o'clock in the morning and 2 a.m. the next morning. You can see that the rainfall has got heavier and then lighter and then heavier again. So it would be reasonable to expect that this pattern of rainfall would have some impact upon a river in the drainage basin that the rain is falling over. It's your job to describe the discharge level. It's worth pointing out at this juncture that you're only going to score marks by describing the line on the graph. The line shows the amount of discharge, and discharge is shown on the graph using its own key. Don't confuse the keys. The right-hand side axis of the graph shows rainfall. We are going to use the discharge axis to describe the line that shows the uh, rate at which the river is filling up with water. So, let's look at that line. There are three basic elements to the line. I'll start with the easiest, here. At this point, you can say the river has reached its peak discharge. And if I were you, sitting in an exam hall or doing a, an assessment, I would be annotating the question paper in exactly this way. The peak discharge is where the river reaches its highest point. If you can work out what time that took place, and just to really secure the marks, how much the discharge was at that point in time, then you'll earn yourself one mark. A good trick or a good tip is to have a ruler with you in the exam which makes lining up the values on the graph nice and easy. As you can see, there was a peak discharge at 2 a.m. in the morning at oh, roughly 85 cumex. All right. The next easiest thing to spot is the falling limb. And that's because it, the falling limb tends to be after the peak discharge. So that is this part of the graph. Now, the falling limb uh, happens between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning. And better still, I could add that it falls from 85 cumex, approximately, to 10 cumex, approximately. And I can check that I'm right about those values just by quickly lining them up with my ruler. So the falling limb is quite easy to spot. It represents the speed at which the river is returning from a peak level of flow to its normal level of flow. The rising limb is a term we use to describe the approach towards peak discharge. But it would be a mistake just to think of the rising limb as um, just one line that we can describe in a simple statement. In actual fact, this line has numerous things that we can point out. For example, there is an element here of your judgment involved. 
But at this point on the graph, between 11 o'clock and 2, there is a very gradual increase in discharge. I will score a mark for pointing that out. In discharge increases in speed between 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock and then rapidly increases between 6 o'clock before reaching its peak at 2 a.m. So you can see that actually I've made three observations on the rising limb and you should be alert to these kind of fluctuations in the rising limb and you should make an effort to try and break it down and describe it in the way that I've just done. So the rising limb actually has the potential to score you multiple marks. Okay, there is another element that we can describe and that's the lag time. Now, some people find lag times to be um, a bit confusing, but I, I, there's a simple method you can use to simplify them. Find your peak discharge. This is the point of peak discharge here. I've already described that. It's the point at which the river is fullest. Now, what we're really looking for here is the distance in time between the last, heavy, the, the last peak in rainfall and this peak in discharge. So... You're going to work your way backwards across the graph from the peak discharge until you are over the most recent peak in rainfall, which is this one. So again, just by using your ruler, we're interested in this line here. This distance represents the distance in time between the river being at its maximum flow, peak discharge, and the rain being its heaviest. And that is, let me just work this out, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. There is a five hour lag time. By taking this approach and breaking the graph down into parts using a highlighter and a ruler, you'll make your life a lot easier. You can also score, in this question, this question is worth 10 marks, so that is 5 marks out of 10. One for identifying when the falling limb begins and ends. One for identifying when the peak discharges. One for identifying the length of the lag time and one for any of the various va uh, valid descriptions in the rising limb. Try to be specific. Use the values from the graph. If it were me sitting this assessment, I would not only quote the times that um, these various events are taking place, but also the discharge quantities. And one final word. When describing the rising limb, Notice my word choice, and this is why I said you have to exercise a little bit of judgment. Here, the rising limb is very gradually rising. Here, it speeds up, and here, it speeds up quite markedly. These kinds of, these kinds of comparative statements are really quite important. So the, the examiner can see that you understand what these changes in the line really mean. Okay. So that's describing a hydrograph broken down. The next thing we're going to do is work on suggesting reasons why these changes have occurred.